Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Coffee with me today, uh, Coffee with Shane. And uh, I am excited to have you here with me. Uh, it is a privilege and a pleasure to hang out with you guys and talk to you in the morning. And so um, really great that you're here. And hopefully um, the audio is decent today. We were messing around with audio yesterday. And, and uh, for whatever reason, I was getting all weird and choppy and and kind of funny. So hopefully things are sounding decent this morning. Um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, as um, as this thing continues with uh, whatever they're calling it, this, the, you know, shelter in place or quarantine or um, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I, I know that I find myself um, not not so much discouraged, but I think distracted. Maybe that's the best way to put this. And um, I'm going to challenge us this morning. I was laying in bed at quite late last night, uh, just thinking about life, thinking about what's going on, thinking about where my heart's at, where my head's at. Um, and and a text popped into my into my head. And so this morning we're not going to actually do a psalm. We're gonna we're gonna focus on something else. And uh, good morning, good morning, Steve. Good to see you. Um, we're actually going to focus somewhere else today, and uh, we're going to focus on what I am going to call um, having a healthy heart perspective. Um, and um, the, you, you might notice I, I, I may be a little bit, um, <clears throat> I may this may be a little bit less polished than than um, others because I've actually been wrestling with this today. Uh, it wasn't something that I had planned to do. And, and so I'm, I'm wrestling through what this actually looks like. Um, in fact, one of the things that I want to do first thing off, um, one of the things that I'm experiencing in this time is that all of my, like, like all of my downtime, anytime that I'm not busy doing something else, like being outside or, or talking to my bride or being here with you guys, um, my Facebook feed is just pumping me full of, of, of all kinds of negative, all kinds of opinionated, all kinds of perspective, um, or opinion. Uh, and one of the things that I found is that most of my day is spent engaged in some level of, you know, this is what's happening now, or this is what they're saying about this now, or this is how, this is how this group is trying to use this for their advantage, or this is how this group, it, it's just been, I, I, it would almost be like a dissonance, a noise, like a, a loud ringing in my ears constantly um, about this virus and about what's happening and and all of the chaos that's going on with that right now. Good, good morning, Kathleen. Good to see you. Um, and I'm, what I'm struggling with is, you guys, I don't think that this is, I don't think that my heart condition when I'm, when I'm engaged in this stuff is honoring to the Lord. And so here's my challenge. This is going to be the challenge I'm going to put out to everybody and we'll, we'll revisit it again here in a little bit, but I am, um, I'm going to do something. And as you can see, if you look here on my phone, uh, Facebook is right there and, uh, because of the distractions that it has been, you can see right here, I'm, I'm going in and I'm going to delete that app off my phone. And I'm going to disconnect from Facebook from having access to me all day. And I'm going to sign in and, and meet with you guys in the morning. Uh, good morning, Amanda. And uh, I'm going to sign in and meet with you all in the morning. And then Facebook and and everything else, if, if I need some news, I can pull up my computer. Um, which I honestly don't know that we need any news right now. I'm not sure what we need. I do know what we need. We need to be in the word of God and we need to be calling one another and we need to be engaging with the church and caring for one another um, and, and not, not getting ourselves completely absorbed and wrapped up and, and uh, drawn into the chaos of this day, the chaos of this, of this time. Good morning, Randy. Good to see you. Um, and so this morning, the passage that I want to share with us is out of Philippians. And, and the reason that, that I want to look at this passage is that as I've been wrestling with, how do I keep my eyes on the right stuff? How do I, how do I experience, um, well, what I want is I want peace. I want, I want to know the peace of God in this time. And I want 
I want all of us to know the peace of God, to experience that, to be able to say, man, I'm at peace in this moment because of who God is, because of who my Savior is. I can rest. I can I can be secure. So I want to really encourage you, if, if your day is spent um, checking your news feed, checking your Facebook feed, being on on the TV, watching the news, getting getting worked up, or hearing even going and getting your own opinion about the news, getting people that that share your the same opinion as you, and all that stuff. I want to challenge you that for this day, for today, to turn all that off, turn off all the noise, turn off every, everything else that is taking the place of God right now in our lives. It's taking the place of the church. And, and disconnect from that and rec- wrestle with and, and, and see if there's a significant difference in how you respond to life, how you respond to others, how you respond to God, to his word, um, to your neighbors. And, and I think when you see the text, I think you're going to, exp- I, I think it'll be encouraging to you. So um, turn with me. Turn with me into in your text to Philippians chapter four, verse two. We're going to start reading there. Um, I have my uh, caramel uh, vanilla, caramel vanilla uh, Keurig coffee with me this morning. And, and I know it's not uh, it's not a high quality thing. And, uh, you know, I apologize, Craig and Maggie. And for all my coffee connoisseurs out there who love coffee, this is not that. Um, but it's the sweetness that I'm enjoying this morning. So. Hopefully you have you have something that that is uh, that you enjoy this morning, whether it's tea or water or coffee, whatever that is. Probably shouldn't be Mountain Dew, boys. My boys shouldn't probably be Mountain Dew or even energy drinks. You know, this is well. I guess coffee is an energy drink, so I guess I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot with that one. Never mind. Back to what I'm here for, and that's to talk about the Word of God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 2 says this I entreat uh, Iodia and I entreat Cynthia to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any anything, anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Good morning, Ann and Bill. Thanks for joining us today. You guys, look at look at what Paul's encouraging the Philippian church. I love this text because the very first thing he starts out with is he says, "Hey, help these two women get over their differences. Help help the people to get past their conflict, to get past their their uh, their discouragement and and, and their conflict uh, uh, with one another, and focus on the important stuff." So even for the Philippian church, the church. Uh, that, that was doing so well in so many things, they're, they're experiencing conflict within the church. And, and it's in this spot that, that Paul's engaging the church and saying, you guys, there's important things to understand. There's, there's, there's a behavior, there's a pattern for us to live by that brings the peace of God and it reflects the glory of God. Good morning, Holly. Good to see you. Oh, good. You've You've already deleted Facebook off your phone. That is awesome. Before we even before we even talked about it, I'm telling you, you guys, I think I think that for this season, for right now, that that would be the, that would be the thing to do is to to get disconnected from all of the craziness, all of the hype of the world, all of the hype of of this of this season of the 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 virus and all of that stuff, and and take some time during your week to just put your eyes on the Lord, to focus on his word, to focus on caring for your family or caring for, for your neighbors or caring for members in the church that, that you, that God's put on your heart to love on and, and, and to support. So good morning, Susan and Dennis. Good to see you guys. Uh, so in the text, when, when, when Paul's encouraging the Philippian church, his focus is 
on the whole church and the value of their names being written in the book of life. And then he starts into this rejoice in the Lord always. He starts into this, this it's a favorite passage. We quote it all the time. Uh, songs are made out of this. But rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. It's interesting, that particular word, the reasonableness of man. I actually have it pulled up right here on my other screen. I've got my big screen up above and I'm talking to you guys on my laptop. But this, this idea of reasonableness um the the words translated uh as gentleness as well um and in the biblical sense of the term when i go over here and i look up in my in my my study program the biblical sense of the term it actually says mercifulness or tolerance of slight deviations from moral and legal rectitude and so this idea that that we as believers, we're, we live in thanksgiving, we're rejoicing in the Lord, the people know us as being uh, having meekness and gentleness and reasonableness and how we engage with, with them, with one another, um, I think also with, with those who we in, engage in the world. And so there's this beautiful picture of the believer who's thankful, who's rejoicing, who's reasonable and, and, and merciful in their dealings with people. Um, and then, and then he, he goes, has the audacity to say, be, and don't be anxious about anything. And now you have to understand they were experiencing persecution at this time, right? So how does he say be anxious for nothing? <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm not supposed to do that on TV. Um, but he says, be anxious about, don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And, and out of that, the peace of God, which surpasses, surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ. And so here's this picture of a believer who's, whose faith is in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They're, they're recognizing who God is and with prayer, supplications, and thanksgiving. So as we're praying, we're bringing our needs to the Lord, but we're also thanking him. We're reminding ourselves of who he is, of his sufficiency of his provision of all of those things we're, we're we're extolling him as we're bringing these prayers as we're bringing this focus and in our needs to him and then and paul says that the peace of god which surpasses all understanding now when we when we try to address that this idea of it surpassing all understanding um I think one of the challenges that I face in the the world of church and and um, knowledge and, and and learning all this stuff is that I spend most of my time most of my time trying to understand and make sense of the Word of God and get the best uh, the best definitions the the most accurate. Uh, interpretations of the word, the most accurate application of how to take the text and, and put it into my life. And, and so when I come to something that surpasses all understanding, um, my temptation is to pursue that, to understand it, to know it, and, and to have all the answers. And yet there's a magnificent freedom in in experiencing peace from god that when all the rest of the world says fear when all the rest of the circumstances say anxiety say say uh, be worried about it um say figure it out try try and find a way out of this there's there's a process for you and for me as believers where we can say god this is yours i i can trust you in this moment i can i can rest in who you are i can i can be at peace not because the circumstances around me are peaceful, but because I am in the hand of an eternal, everlasting God. And in that condition, in that spot, there is peace that, that surpasses all human understanding, all um, comprehension of how it's even possible that we can be at peace in this moment. And then his closing words, to, he says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there's anything excellent, if there's anything uh, worthy of praise. Think about these things. Um, how are we doing that? Uh, how are we doing that in, in, in thinking about life right now? Are we really focused on the things that are true? Uh, and I'm not talking about the political. I'm not talking about... 
what what numbers of COVID, how they're no, I'm talking about the the real truth. Are we really focused on the truth, which is who God is? That's what the world needs. That we as much as as much as I want our politics to be based on truth, and, and I'm really taking that challenge to pray for my leaders that we talked about the other day, to be praying for them. Um, to be praying for this whole situation, to pray that God would bring a uh, resolution to this, that the gospel would go out and people would find peace and hope, praying for all of those things. But when Paul's challenging his the, the brothers and sisters of the Philippian church to focus on whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, I believe that what he's really turning us to is to say, get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on the truth of who Jesus is. You want peace in your life? You want you want that joy, that that thankfulness, that ability to look at all of the things that are happening and be able to say, God, I can trust you today. Then I need to get my eyes on Jesus. I need to I need to turn off Facebook. I need to I need to stop watching even even some of the guys that I like that I think are more accurate than others. I mean, I have my own opinion on that stuff. I have my own I have my own views on that, um, which some of you may agree with. Some of you may not. And that's OK. I can I can still be friends with people that think I'm an idiot. Um, it, you know that that that's not a hard part for me. Or or I, I can actually be friends with people that disagree disagree with me on a lot of stuff, a lot of things. Um, but what I don't what I don't want to do is to is to get distracted by all of that and stop looking at Jesus, to stop being focused on Him. To stop being focused on reflecting him and living in in his grace, living in light of who he is, so that the world around me might see Jesus. Remember what Paul said yesterday in our text that um, he's the weak to the weak. He's the actually I don't think we've read that one yet. I'm I'm still wrestling with this. See, look, I'm I'm just a mess today. Paul says that he's all things to all people. Why? What is that? Second Corinthians. I think I've got the note right here. Second Corinthians. Uh, nope. First Corinthians. First Corinthians nine. <clears throat> for though I am free from all, First Corinthians nine nineteen says this. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. To the Jewish. Or to the Jews, I become as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I become as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I, become, I became an outs, uh, as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessing. When 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 I am when I'm wrapped up and distracted by the world, whether it's church stuff, whether it's uh, you know, like I don't know, sometimes it's easy to get distracted by building issues or 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 even conflict in the church, like we were looking at in Philippians. Um, that kind of stuff can can be a real distraction for me. Um, and, and I can become very discouraged in the things of this world right now, the, the, the isolation and, and all the fear and all of the, the, the po political posturing and, and everything that's happening in that it drives me nuts at times. And yet what I'm supposed to be focused on are the true, the good, the pure, the, the, the honorable, the, the things of Christ, the things that are, that are centered in his character, who he is. So I'm not running around looking for truth. I'm not running around looking for honorable. I'm focused on the one that is. And in that moment, in that time of focus, in that time of reflection, then, then I begin to live in peace and I can now be all things to all people in a way that, that puts the gospel forward, that makes Christ the, the focus and the center of, of my heart and my passion and my attention and I believe that's when he gets the honor and the glory is when we live that way. So I'm turning off my Facebook and, and today I'm not, I'm not going to watch any news. I'm not going to watch any, any reports from any, any of the guys that I have on my Facebook feed that, 
that, you know, give me their opinions about stuff. I'm, I'm going to turn all of that off. And when I open my phone today, um, I'm going to open the Bible and I'm going to read. Um, and then interesting, if, if you're stuck at home and you can't work right now, you don't have anything better to do. Just saying. But I think it's pretty important that we, uh, that we get our heads around that, that we redirect ourselves um, and we turn off the noise. We turn off the distraction. We, we align our focus on the things that are important. We put our eyes on the most important. Um, I told you that I've, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants today a little bit. And uh, I apologize if I'm killing anybody out there. But I think what I'm going to do, I introduced a song a while back at church um, called Clear the Stage. And I'm going to try and sing that for you again. Um, I hope, hopefully I won't blow it. I've, uh, I haven't <clears throat> been practicing all that much. So give me a second to grab my guitar and, um, I'm going to close today with this song. Um, hopefully, hopefully it'll go all right. So <clears throat> oh. oh man. Okay. Um, this song is written and, uh, written by Ross King. And the version that I heard that, that I really enjoyed was done by Jimmy Needham. And uh, so, again, I apologize if I blow it and haven't practiced this song in quite a while. So this is, this is going to be a... We'll see how it goes. Clear the stage, set the sound and lights ablaze. If that's the measure you must take to crush the idols. Took the pews and all the decorations too Until the congregation few that has revival Tell your friends that this is where the party ends Until you're broken for your sins You can't be so sure Seek the Lord and wait for what He has in store Know that great is your reward, so just be hopeful, cause you can sing all you want to, yes you can, sing all you want to, you can sing all you want to, but still get it wrong. Worship is more than a song. Take a break from all the plans that you have made and sit at home alone and wait for God to whisper. Beg him, please. To open up his mouth and speak And pray for real upon your knees Until they blister Shine your light on every corner of your life Until the pride and lust and lies are in the open So read the word and put to test the things you've heard Till your heart and soul are stirred and rocked and broken. Cause you can sing all you want to. Yes, you can sing all you want to. You can sing all you want to, but still get it wrong. Worship. Is more than a song. We must not worship something that's not even worth it. Clear the stage, make some space for the one who deserves it. Anything I put before
before my God is an idol. Anything I want with all my heart is an idol. Anything I can stop thinking of is an idol. Anything that I give all my love is an idol. I can sing all I want to. Sing all you want to, but still get it wrong. Worship is more than song. Man, I love that song. And, uh, it's been one of those songs that has just really been rocking my heart um, to say, man, Lord, is, is, has the church become, has the church become an idol to us? Has our, has our exercise of worship, the way in which we do church, has that become the idol? Has my, have my preferences become the idol? Have, have my opinions become the idol? Has my comfort become an idol? Ugh. We need to get our eyes on the things of the Lord, brothers and sisters. We, we are, we have to. And it's so important that we do because God's called us to reach the lost. God's called us to reach our neighbors and, and our loved ones who don't know him. It, it's, it's the privilege and pressure and, and opportunity that God's given us as his children to be his representatives. So let me leave you with this. Ephesians 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Would you unplug from all of the distractions today? And would you put... God first in your thought process, in your focus. And, and the moment that we don't, the moment that we, we pick up our phone or we turn on our computer, I, I want you to really take this challenge to heart. Maybe that's a moment you need to just fall on your knees and confess and say, Lord, I'm addicted to this. God, I mean, I pick up my phone, you guys, from time to time. I just pick it up and look to see if anything's on there. Even when nothing's even happened, I do it because I'm addicted to this thing. I'm addicted to being so important that people would actually text me, that there'd be notices for me, notifications for me, that, that this somehow my value comes from this thing going, bing. Hey, somebody wants to talk to you. Hey, something important. Hey, something you need to deal with. There is something we need to deal with, and it's this. Yeah, wasn't that fun? Aren't you guys glad to join me today? Ah. Man, I love you guys. I just want us to serve the Lord. I want us to burn out going for Jesus. And I want us to make a difference in this world today, now. What a time, what a privilege, what an opportunity for the church to be alive. What an opportunity for the church to change the, the, the program, to change our effect. Let's be the church. Let's get focused on Jesus and let's change people's lives because we're showing them and introducing them to Christ. Ah, what a great joy it is to be part of this process with you. Thanks for joining me this morning. May God bless you today with his peace and a focus on him that maybe is new. Maybe it's something that you've been missing for many, many years. 
But as we turn off the distractions, as we shut down the influence that the world has into our hearts, into our minds, and we turn our minds to him, may God be glorified in your life. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10.